next example, GPX1. It's also an interesting gene. So uh, the GPX1 gene contains the instructions of how to build the GPX1 protein. And this is a so-called selenoprotein, which means it needs the trace element selenium from diet. So selenium is integrated into this enzyme and then it has a function. And it, again, it recognizes certain free radicals of toxic molecules that our body produces that need to be removed before they do any damage. So with selenium, you produce this and then the free radical comes along and is broken into smaller pieces. And, um, um, and so if you are selenium deficient, this doesn't happen. So you should have enough selenium. Now there are some people again, which have a genetic error in this gene, genetic variation. And what happens is the instructions of how it is built are slightly different. So you see this red thing here. It still needs selenium to be built and it still recognizes free radicals, but the uh, efficiency of this process is a lot lower. So even with a normal amount of selenium, you end up with a lower protection against these free radicals through this genetic error that you have inherited. So you only have low activity, even though you're not deficient in selenium. And again, scientists have found out if you increase the amount of selenium, you produce so many more of these less efficient enzymes that in the end you have the same protective function. So again, based on genetics, you would need more and a blood test would only tell you, are you in the norm? Yes or no. So this is only half the story. Um, this is a little overview of, of genetics. So um, I'll explain this to you. This is the GPX1 gene. 67% of Caucasians have uh, the good version. So they have good protection against oxidative stress. 26% have one functional and one broken copy one less effective copy. So they have lower protection against oxidative stress and 7% have two of those broken copies and uh, they need significantly more selenium for the same thing. And down here you see individual studies um, that, uh, that, that prove this. Um, a, a little background in the field of medical genetics. So um, my lab is a medical genetic testing lab. There's a, a minimum of scientific evidence that you need to make a certain claim. And that is you need at least three different scientific studies done by three different scientists on three different groups of people. And if they all find the same thing, then apparently it's replicable. And then you can say, okay, now this is scientifically valid enough to warrant testing. And then you need to ask yourself the question if it does make sense to know about this information. So, um, so and this is why I said these 52 genes um, um, have enough science. So they have at least three studies, but as you've seen, some of them have uh, several hundred studies. Um, 